my name is Phuong Long, you can call me Long. And I right now, I am mean, the second year student of my master. My master is Erasmus Smith, joint master degree, which uh, consists of two degrees, one from Santana School of Advanced Study in Italy and Aston University in the UK. And today, I will, I will tell you about my master's scholarship journey, like how did I get my scholarship. Uh, and my scholarship is Erasmus Mundus, which is uh, offered by uh, US, uh, European Union. We are, that covers everything in your study. Like, uh, it covers the living cost, the tuition fee, and the health insurance, and also the flight tickets. So, I will tell you your, I will tell you my journey to get this scholarship based on my personal experience. I didn't win every scholarship, so I'm not sure if you can win every scholarship after this speech. But I think I can give you some inspiration and passion, so you can try to apply what I told you today in, in the future. So maybe you can. Uh, you can get the scholarship you want. Okay, so let's start uh, with uh, with the, the first step. I will write here. The first step you need to know uh, your motivation. Motivation. Like you need to answer the question. Like, do you really need to study master? So it's based on your the future plan, like right? uh, if you want to follow academic path, or you want to earn the higher salary, or you want to get promotion in your job, so it's based on your, I mean your plan. So if you can answer that question, so you can know that oh okay, I really need to study master. Okay, go for it. Uh, take me as a, as an example. I want to follow academic path. I want to become professor. I want to teach uh, the the students in the futures. So that's why I, I go for academic path. So that's why I study master. So this is motivation. Uh, and you answer the why you need master. This first question. The second question, like, do you really need scholarship? Why scholarship? If your family economic, economic status is enough for you, okay, you can go for a master. But if your, your family status is not enough, or you want to get achievement in your life, or you want to get away with uh, economic issues during your study in master, you can go for a scholarship. Don't think that scholarship is very difficult. There are so many scholarships in the world and at least you can find at least one that's very suitable for you. Okay, so for me, because I studied bachelor degree in Vietnam, and after after graduation, I didn't want to receive money from my parents anymore. So that's why, because I really want to study master, but I I didn't want to receive money from my my parents anymore. So scholarship is the only choice I I go. So so I start started uh, looking for information on internet, ask my friends, ask my professor. That's this that was when I started my scholarship journey. So I already define my motivation. This is first step. The next step is uh, you need to um, Select the scholarship you want. So this this step I call select the scholarship you want. So in this step, I will divide into two small steps. Like you need to categorize the scholarship you want and choose based on uh, based on your demand. In categorize, there are so many. Uh, 
way you can categorize scholarship. Uh, the first one, like uh, you can categorize based on countries. Like you will answer the question where you want to study. For me, I want to study in Europe, so I, I choose I only find scholarship for Europe only. You can you can go for US, for Australia, um yeah, or even Japan, South Korea. It depends on your demand. The next one is the fund. Fund uh, fund means um, some scholarship will cover almost everything. Uh, we call it fully funded scholarship. There are other scholarship which only cover the tuition fee or only a part of uh, living cost. I call partial funded. So I guess everyone wants to get high money as you as you as possible, right? So you can choose the fully funded scholarship to apply for, but you should choose some partial funded scholarship as backup. So it depends on country, fund, uh, maybe major. You can answer which field of study you want to go for, and the provider. Some scholarship um, are provided by the government and state, which is very generous. Uh, but some scholarships uh, will be provided by university, and the, the other scholarship provided by non-government organization. Like, have you heard about the Bean School Scholarship? Yeah. Yeah. Never. Okay, because. Being a Vin group in Vietnam, they started a, a growing Vin University. You know that. So they uh, will provide some, I mean, I don't remember the number, maybe 100 scholarships per year for students to study in higher education in, abroad in US, Australia. Mm -hmm. So they will, maybe they will, but it's, there, there will be. A red restriction that they need to come back to to be to work for them. Yeah, but some scholarship uh, has no restriction. You feel free. You can go everywhere you want after maybe. Okay, so after answer all these questions, you you know what that which scholarship you you need to to choose. Uh, in this day, it's very important. Choose your scholarship you want. So. Where you can find the information of scholarship. Now the problem is the information source. Information, some information sources can come from internet or can come even from your friends or even from the senior student. So even from your professor. And we provide you some information source at the end of this speech. Um, but Right now, you should uh, know that there are some information sources on the internet you can easily find. It. So, after you can find information sources on the internet, please uh, read the requirements in scholarship because different scholarship will be aimed for different group people. Not everybody can apply for it. Like, for example, um, some scholarship will require you to have at least two years of work experience. So if you you uh, just graduated from your university, you cannot apply for it, right? Or some scholarship will uh, require you from some specific reason, so you cannot apply for it if you're not in that reason. Okay, so remember to read the requirements of the scholarship, and after that, you will check uh, the required documents. Required document uh, is written in uh, this information source. So you will prepare documents based on uh, based on uh, the information sources. Uh, some documents uh, will not be available at the time you you read the information source. So you have to prepare for it. Some only available, so you can I mean just submit on internet. Okay, so um, remember that this process 
will take uh, not uh, I mean takes quite long. It will take uh, several months, even years. So for me, uh, I started uh, looking for scholarships when I was in the final year of my bachelor degree in twenty seventeen. And the time I got my current scholarship as an aid of 2018, so it's almost two years, so uh, you have to be patient. It's like a journey. You, you can fail sometimes, but you can try it next time, next time. Uh, let me tell you a story. Um, when I was in my final year, my bachelor, I applied for two master scholarship. One is Polisaple in Paris, France, and one cost in Erasmus Mundus. I filled both. Um, but I did uh, I didn't give up. I I told myself that okay, let's try next time. If I fail again, okay, I will go as a self-funded student. But at least I can try it at least one more time. Okay, and and then I try. And you know, uh, in this year, I always successful successful uh, one scholarship in Italy. I uh, one week before going to Italy, I received an email that I I will I will I was promoted from deserve list to main list of uh, my current scholarship, and. My scholarship now offer me more money than scholarship in Italy. So I changed my scholarship one week before I I plan to go to Italy. I cancel the flight ticket, I cancel my visa and I apply for visa again, I book the ticket again. And so why I tell you this thing? Because Sometimes you should try your best. Maybe the good thing um, haven't come, but it will come. Sometimes it's quite, it's quite late, but at least you, you will come. You will come eventually. So what you have to do is try your best to to try to. Uh, I mean, don't give up. Uh, sometimes uh, when I graduate. Sometimes, if you are in the final year of your bachelor degree, uh, your friend started uh, earning money, and some people already went for a study master, and you only sit in front of the computer at home with empty pocket and looking for a scholarship. So some people will will give up because. It's very tiring and time consuming. But if you can define your motivation, it's very clear. You should uh, I mean, uh, consistent at your journey. Just follow this path. Don't follow uh, any negative advice like some people tell you uh, you're so uh, useless. You should go to earn money, but if you can define motivation very clear, you should go for it, and you you will get what you want eventually. That's my, my advice. And the next is the steps. It is time to apply for the scholarship. Um, this step you will um, they will ask you to. Uh, Submit some documents. I will. I will not tell you all the documents. is very. It's very long list. I will tell you only some important documents. The first one is CV. The CV. The CV as a, a backbone of your body. So it's not. Uh, I mean, uh, you you should be concise in this document. The document should not be too long, it should be only one or two pages. But this is the backbone of your application. 
and other documents uh, as like a ribs you should put uh, alongside the CV. So the CV, I suggest you one format I use is a Eurotest. Maybe somebody already heard about it. And the next one is the next document is uh, SOP statement purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call it motivation letter. Motivation letter. It's very important too because uh, the, the scholarship committee uh, will know you based on this document. So in this document, you have to keep, to clarify two points: yourself and your future plan. You have to tell them who you are, uh, yourself, and your future plan. So you have to uh, define some points. Um, you answer some questions like um, why they will they have to choose you to get this scholarship. Uh, let me give you some some tips. In all my application, I I told them my first personal story, like how I fall in love with my major. Uh, my major is telecommunication. I I I told them. I started using computers since I was in primary school and uh, that was when internet uh, started uh, becoming popular in Vietnam so I asked myself uh, how possible all computers in the world can be connected how was this miracle they apply for it so that's why I I want to learn more and more about telecommunication, about networks. Uh, I, I, I told them that in my SOP. And you can apply this tip in your SOP. You can tell them why you fall in love with the major you are studying. You can tell them who inspired you to study these majors. Uh, what happened in your life that made you follow this one. And one more thing you need to clarify in SOP, your future plan. It's all very important too. Um, they will they need to know what you will do after graduation. Uh, it's very important because they will not offer someone who is not clear about their futures. So you have to clarify this. For example, uh, you can tell them like um, after graduation, you might want to go for a PhD or you want to uh, improve yourself in a specific majors, in specific fields of study. This is very important. And one more thing, the uh, recommendation letter. Recommendation letter. Um, you can get it from the university, from your professors. But this one, you should um, get this document from the, the people you, who is very close to you, who uh, know very well about you. Because they can, you can write, uh, I mean, specific. But I, I know some, some professor in Vietnam, they provide uh, a recommendation letter to all the students with the same format. <laughs> it's very bad, right? It even it's negative for you. So <laughs> even if you don't submit that document, it's even better than submit that kind of document. So uh, you should find someone who's very close to you, right? It's uh, only for you, not for not too general. Because when the scholarship committees uh, we have something general. They, they will know that this way. They, they, you, you copy it from internet or you copy it from some people. Okay. Uh, this uh, process is also quite time consuming. You should, uh, you should not um, give up at this time. 
Ah, okay, I forgot, I forgot one for it. Uh, uh, this uh, this step. Select scholarship is very important. Uh, in my mind, I think that selecting a scholarship is like looking for a girlfriend or boyfriend. Uh, not everyone will sue you, right? Uh, some will sue you, or even one. But don't scare. If you find someone who sue you, it's very easy to approach him or her, right? So if you can find the scholarship that is designated for you, it will be easier than you applying for a famous scholarship that uh, didn't sue you. At this point, so yeah. Uh, maybe some scholarship will require you uh, an interview. Interview. At this point, uh, the professor will make a video call with you to ask you some questions. Most of the time, they will ask you what you wrote in SOP or the Wilkinson letter. So, so this one you have to, to remember what you wrote here to answer this step. So at this one you should not follow the sample from internet, you should uh, write yourself. You should be yourself this step. Don't try to follow any sample on the internet. So at this one you can remember what you wrote in this part. And some professor will ask you some uh, technical question or question related to your major. Uh, I cannot give you some tips at this, but we have to you have to be quite good at your field study to answer at this point. But they will ask two points what you wrote in SOP and the question related to your, your field study. Um, so uh, you have to, uh, at this point, one more thing, you have to prepare it early, early preparation. Some uh, scholarship has very early deadline, so you should prepare uh, earlier as soon as, as soon as possible. Because, you know, um, applying for scholarship is not only preparing documents, you have to prepare yourself. Like for example, if you want to get high score in your university, you cannot get high score in few days, few months, it's like a process. Or if you want to get a publication, you want to publish a paper, it cannot be done within few weeks, it takes time. So start as, long, as, as soon as possible. And if you can prepare early, you can prevent some unexpected problem during your application. For example, if you apply for a scholarship in the last minute, the server of the scholarship maybe can be there can be a high traffic at that time, so maybe you cannot apply, you cannot submit before deadline. You will not you you don't expect that right. So try to apply as soon as possible. So you can have time to review all documents you want to submit and prevent uh, unexpected issues. And at the at the end of my speech, I will give you some useful links as I promised. Uh, This is some uh, oops and page on Facebook you can you can go for and some useful link first two are in Vietnamese and the third one is in English and at this point if you can answer the question of, uh, which country you want to study you can Google the keyword study in the country you want to study you can find some websites which is relevant to you and here are two uh, famous scholarship, fully founded famous scholarship, you cover almost everything during your study. And, and these two 
what you are still writing. You know, uh, how can I choose the USCD? I go to, to this website, uh, go to this ranking, go to the country I want to apply for, try to uh, narrow, narrow your uh, target, your USCD, and uh, you can choose top 10 USCD from each country. For example, you can try top 20 or top 30 if you want. So you have a list of the USCD you want to apply for. So you can go to their websites, go to uh, the section admission or scholarship. They will provide you requirements, how to apply, the deadline, everything you need to know. And it's very, uh, it's very time consuming, right? Because for, uh, let me do the same calculation. If you want to study uh, your target country, uh, it can be in both of five or six countries. And at, at, at one country, you, you choose top 10 university. So it will be 60 or 30, 70 university. You have to go to their website. It's very time consuming. But as I told you, be patient. Because you cannot apply for 60 or 70 scholarship, some scholarship will not be relevant to you. Like they require some some things you you don't have. Okay, skip it, go to the next one. You can find the, the thing, the scholarship which is suitable to you. Um the below is some US scholarship in Finland. I did research yesterday. You know I I haven't studied in Finland, but uh, I think, but but you know, it took only one day or few hours for you guys to go to this to some USC's website to find this information. So I can find it. So you who are only study in Finland can do it uh, yourself. And I give you some scholarship I found yesterday. Like you see, Helsinki they they provide three types of scholarship. First one is is cover the tuition fee and living allowance. The second one only tuition fee, and the third one is uh, only living allowance. And under UC too, they only provide uh, the tuition fee a reduction or tuition fee waiver. They they do not provide. Uh, and they did not cover the living cost. So here yeah, you can find Tampere USD or Oulu USD and Togo USD I found yesterday. I will give you uh, this on PDS website, but you can take a photo of it. Okay, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.